Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a make module that easily allows us to send data from a database to an API, for example, the OpenAI API. And as always, let's switch to the Miro board and map out the whole scenario. All right, to set the context for this scenario, I want to start by adding a couple of things here on the screen. So the first thing is going to represent our database. So the whole idea is that we should be able to fetch data from our database and then send this data over to any API that we were to use. Here, what I want to do, and this is where this idea came from for this video, is essentially I was trying to send some data to OpenAI basically within a prompt so that it can take the data from my database and use that in the prompt and then kind of do something with it, which I will have another video explaining the whole workflow. But essentially what happens is when you have something like this and you want to send data from this database to an OpenAI API or any other API for that matter, what you have is, and let me add a few boxes here to represent the records. And for me, the database is Airtable most of the times. What will happen is Airtable has, uh, based on the query, it will return some records. So in this case, let's say it's returning three records. Now, I want to send all of them. I want to send all of them to my API. Basically, the data from all of these records, I want to send over to API, in this case, the OpenAI API. So how do we do that in Make? Because Make has, as I've uh, talked about in a previous video, Make has this concept of bundles. And when we uh, query this database, we are returned three different bundles. But here, OpenAI side or the API side, we only want to send data once, not multiple times. So how do we do that? But let me show you. So let's switch over to Make. Uh, let me close this one out. And I have some basic setup here as I was testing before the video as always. So I have my Airtable module ready to go. And what it's doing is I have an Airtable database here called the Project Tracker. And in this, I have a table called Activity Log. And this basically logs any changes in my task table. Status was updated, due date, due date was updated, a task was created, and so on and so forth. So I want to query this database and then send this to OpenAI. So let's just start by... Let's make sure we have everything here all set up. Okay, so it's taking from the current view, uh, view, current week view, which is right here. And I'm getting everything, all the details from that table. And then I have the limit set to three just for this demo. So hit OK, click and run this module. So as you can see, it will return three bundles. So bundle one, bundle two, bundle three, and each bundle representing one record in our database. So and just to recap, and I've already talked about this in the array aggregators video, but just to recap what happens if we just send this data directly. And here, Slack is just acting as a proxy for my API call. So I'm going to go here, and then in the Slack message, I will say the activity log ID, or the log ID is, and I'm just going to grab the ID from the Airtable module. So if I click on this and hit OK, and then I'm going to run this module, and notice what happens. It is going to send me three different Slack messages, one per bundle. So if I go to my Slack space, we'll see we have three records here. The log ID is this and this, which is basically coming from Airtable, top three record IDs here. So that's not going to work because when I make my API call, I want to send all of this data together. As I already showed in the Miro board, I want to send all of these records as a whole to my API. In this case, Slack is acting as a proxy. So how do we do that? So, well, the first thing is, the first option is, uh, as I showed in my previous video, is to add an array aggregator. So if I add a module here and I try to uh, aggregate them, if I click on array aggregator, what it will do is I will select everything. So basically it's asking me to select what fields you want to aggregate. So I'll select all and hit OK. And now when I update my Slack message, I no longer want to grab it from the Airtable module. I want to grab it from the array. So from the array, if I grab the ID and hit OK, and let's run this again and see what happens. So now it only sent me one Slack message. So that is progress because here, if we see, we had three separate output bundles. And then in the if you look at the output of the array aggregator, now we have one bundle. So we went, so we gave it three bundles going in. So three records that we got from a database. And the output is an array because it's an array aggregator with three different values in it. So now the bundle itself is just one. So that's why we went from three Slack messages to just a single Slack message because now it's just one bundle and everything in made the way it works is all these modules are run per bundle. So now given we only have one bundle, it will only run one time and we only got one Slack message. But the problem is it only gave me the ID 
of the first one. So this is the latest message. This, these are the three that came in earlier, and this is the one that just came in. So it only gave me the first ID. Again, this is not going to work because I want to send, if you go back to the motherboard, I want to send all of them, not just one of them, all of them. So how do we do that? So let's go back to make, and we are going to, let me align this, and let me delete this module. So what we are going to use for this is something known as the JSON aggregator. Hey, if you're enjoying this tutorial, you might want to check out No Code University, where I have a ton of practical courses on similar topics, including Airtable and Zapier. You can learn everything you need to know to unlock high income opportunities in the no code and AI space. To get started, you can find the link in the description below. Now back to the video. And if you don't know what a JSON is, I have a separate video on explaining exactly what a JSON is. So I highly recommend checking that out because uh, it is core to everything that you do with APIs and making all these calls. Uh, so it's pretty simple to understand once explained to you uh, in the right manner. I know some bad definitions out there, but check out the video, hopefully it'll make sense. Anyway, back to this. So if I add a JSON aggregator here instead of an array aggregator, so let's click on add a module and look for JSON. And then one of the options here is aggregate to JSON. Very good. So here there's a few things. So it's more than the array aggregator. For a JSON, you need to define the, the, the structure of a JSON because a JSON, uh, you need to have a before you actually can send value to it or before you can create the JSON, you have to think about what are the key value pairs that are going to be part of this particular JSON module. So it's asking, what is the data structure? So you can either select from something that you already have, or you can create a new one. So I'm just going to create a new one. And what you get to do here is, because if you notice in the output, we are getting everything. We have the log, we have the name, we have the project, we have all of these things, but you might not want to send all of this to let's say OpenAI, if you're asking it to read this data and create some output for you, you might not want to send everything. So you can hand pick what you want to send. And the way you do that is you will go to the JSON module, you'll click on add a data structure, and I'll call it YT video activity log data structure. And in this, so here, when it says specification, so now you can specify everything that you want to grab from the bundle, which was returned from the database, and you want to send further to your API call or anywhere else. So I'm going to add a few things here. So first thing I will add is, let's say the date, right? And the type of the date, we can, uh, the type of the data you can select here from the dropdown. So for this, I'll just select date. So this is going to grab date coming in from my database, and it's going to add that date into my JSON under the key date. And this will all make sense once we run it. Second thing I'm going to add is uh, change type. And this, by the way, don't have to match what you're getting from uh, your database. This name you can define yourself, whatever makes sense for your API call. Or in a, in a lot of cases, actually, the API call expects specific key values. So you can make sure that these actually make sense. And for this one, I will select, I'll just leave it as text because the change type here, if you look at it, is basically the type. So I'll just call it change type, whether it's created, modified, deleted, and stuff like that. And oops, I think we lost our data structure. So let's start over quickly. Say YouTube activity log data structure. Make sure this is correct. Okay, so the first one was date. So click on date. Second one is the change type. And for this one, we'll keep it as text. You can give it a default value, but you don't have to. And then one more, let's add the, the log. So the log is actual string defining the change, what happened in that activity. So three is good for now. So let's hit save. And once you hit save, what will happen is it will ask you, okay, where is this data coming from? Because so far what we did is we only defined the data structure, not the data mapping itself. Once you define the data structure, then you need to map the actual data from the database to it. So the date we can say is coming from the, the created date here. And then change type can be the type, which is right here. And then the actual log is just the log. Very good. So now if we hit OK, so now we're good to go. And let's make sure this is auto aligned. And in the Slack module, now what we need to do is, this is no longer going to work, obviously, because we deleted that module. What we can do is we can simply, now you will see this JSON string as an output, because that is what the JSON module outputs. So you click on that. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it in three backticks because then it will render it as code in my Slack and it's easier to read. So hit OK. And now when we run it, so now when we run it, there we go. So it went through, it grabbed the three bundles like it always does. 
then it grabbed, then it converted it into a JSON. And now we can see that our JSON is, we have the log, we have the change type, and we have the date. And now if we check, we only got one Slack message, which is perfect because we only want to make one API call. So if we go to YouTube or uh, YouTube channel in my Slack, the log ID is, and then we got the whole JSON string. So we got the whole JSON string. And actually let me take this and open a JSON parser just so we can see it clearly. Oops, that side can't be found. Let's use this one. There we go. So if I type this here, then copy, copy again. There we go. So now we can see that this JSON has three values in it, the log, the date, and change type. And all three are here in one giant JSON. So now we can send this JSON directly to whatever API call we need to make, OpenAI, whatever. And we have achieved the outcome that we were after going from three bundles into just one single value. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is a pretty handy module for such use cases, especially when you're you know, sending, getting data from somewhere and sending it to another location. So yeah, try it out. And then I will have one more video coming out soon, which is going to talk about an advanced use case that I've been building using this project tracker and why I built this activity log in the first place. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.